have a Lennox Energents. Oh, this is for a lab. They make eyeglasses here. We got several units. That's the lab. These two units, and that's the clean room where they polarize and clean the lenses. But anyways, this unit was down, so you probably won't be able to see on the screen. But I like these controllers. It's pretty easy to see what's going on. You hit this button right here. It says service. You go down, data, settings. Actually, you go back to data. You have your runtime, history, alarms. Then I'll go through your uh, last alarm. As the date, the alarm, and the time. 115, that's the code number. It says unit offline. 82, it says controller reset. And it was uh, throw in a 13. And then a 15. A 13 is a uh, compressor one, high pressure lockout. And then code 15 is uh, strike three, and I'll shut down. So to go into test mode, so I'm assuming one of the fans is down. We'll go back to service, test, okay, this is guided. Blower, we can check the blower. I'm gonna skip that because I already checked it. Fans. Fan one. Fan two. So go to fan one. This is fan one off. Click the up arrow. We'll turn on. But we have no fan. I can hear the relay energizing. I'm gonna check for power and we're gonna check the capacitors. I already checked them, both of these are good for fan one two. But for some reason, uh, fan one is not turning on. So let's go test fan number two. Turn it on. I got the relay. Air's drawn in through the other side. So let's go back and test fan number one again. Turn it off. Go back. Fan one on. I hear the relay, but no fan. So that's why it locked out on high pressure. Fan number one needs to be replaced. Just to double check, I'll check power and I already checked capacitors. But I want to make sure we're getting voltage to it. You can also check, um, let's go back and check the blower. Turn this off. Okay. Blower. 
high speed. Turn it on. Now we can check, we can check different speeds too. Right now I'm going to check cool. Circuit 1. Compressor came on, but only one fan motor came on. Compressor 1 is running. Discharge air temperature, return air temperature. Probably should have short cycled, but we'll check circuit number two. Compressor number two comes on. Only one fan is running. Both fans should be running all the time. Heat the same way, the damper. You can check your sensors. Return air, discharge air. Pretty pretty cool features for this controller, so I'll check the power and more than likely it's that motor. It's going to have to be replaced. Check out these compressors. They remind me of LG compressors. There's your uh, thermal overload on the head. Not a fan of LG compressors. Relays too. This is my fan motor relay. Fan one. Now this toast. Oh, how well you can see that. Switched it with another relay just to make sure the fan's gone. volt condenser fan motor my relay and um, capacitor and an enthalpy sensor for that unit enthalpy 
enthalpy, however you want to say it. Anyways, the first time I came across one of these controllers, I was like, what the heck is that? I'm not going to lie, I was kind of intimidated because I've never seen a board, you know, this big with all these, uh, basically just a big control board, a bunch of wires connected to it, but they are user friendly. And Linux does have a, they do a good job at putting a pretty good schematic with uh, pretty much where everything's located at. So I really like that. But yeah, when I first saw this, I was, didn't know if I had to bring my computer up to connect it to the USB, but that's just to save profiles so you can pretty much profile another unit the same way. But uh, just wanted to see where it shorted out on the inside the motor relay, new relay. That's your new first choice cat. And it is this capacitor right here. So looks like a tight little spot. But get this unit up and running then go check uh, replace the enthalpy sensor for that unit all right on this uh, unit we go to data history alarms Outdoor Empathy Sensor A7. Basically, no free cooling. So, it's this plug right here. Go ahead and replace it and set the set point to D on this dial. And hopefully, that takes care of it. We'll find out. I had to uh, take out the these little screen filters. Here's the uh, Sensor connects to the bottom plug. The top plug is for the actuator, the motor, damper motor. So let's take this off and swap it out. Well, crap, I went to install this new sensor and I had to put a uh, new terminals on it because the old ones didn't fit this won't fit into that jack that plug anyways I was pulling the wire to strip it to put my new terminals on it and this came out look at the plug so I guess they have a backup sensor now. Cause this one's probably still good, but we'll let them keep it in there. And I guess we'll go ahead and put the new one and fix the wire. Probably gonna have to cut the plug out. It's all corroded inside. <sighs> 
kind of a good thing that that happened because I would have put the new sensor in, and I would have been like, well shit, it's not working still. Trial and error. So here's the, the old plug. Should have known by that discoloration on the plug, but anyways, what I did is I just pretty much broke this plug and just ran the wires through the through the hole. Probably cut that off, but it's either a, I'm either a hack or a cowboy, but that was more of a hack. But I just ran it through. the plug right there mounted it and plugged it in and we'll test it make sure everything's working all right just making sure it's reading my sensor I'm gonna these are the set points for the uh, sensor I'm gonna set it to D I'll post a little picture of what the settings mean Yeah. 